Say everybody, Oki, Bozu, Tanshi, and welcome. My name is Chantal Chagnon. I am Cree, Anishinaabe, and Metis, Muscat Lake Cree Nation, which is in Saskatchewan in Treaty Six Territory. And I live in Treaty Seven Territory, which is known as Mokinstis or Calgary. Mokinstis means elbow and Blackfoot. And so I honor the people of this land that I walk upon because it's important to know where you are, or else you don't know where you're going. It's also important to acknowledge the land because you're not only acknowledging the land, but you're acknowledging the people who have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. You're acknowledging the relationships that we need to build with each other and with the land itself and the responsibility that we have to learn from the past so that we can make the world a better place for all our future generations. This is my son, Lyndon, Hello. and he's going to be helping me today because I've lost my voice a little bit. So when I share the songs, it's important to have an extra voice. And so the first story I'm going to be sharing with you is the story of the Thunderbird. And so a long, long time ago, when we were first created, we actually didn't really know much and we didn't really have much. And um, it was pretty good for a while. We were walking around just kind of wearing nothing but leaves um, until one winter, it got very, very cold. This was the coldest we'd ever experienced before. And we started to freeze to death. And now there was a very special spirit. His name is Wasaka Jack. And he's a little bit of a trickster. Sometimes he gets into trouble, but he means well. <clears throat> and he liked to take care of us. And he saw that we were freezing. And so he went to Creator and he said, Creator, Creator, the two legged, which is us because we walk around on two legs, they're freezing. We have to be able to keep them warm through the winter. What are we going to do? And Creator thought for a moment. He said, Wasaka Jack, go and get the buffalo and we'll have a conversation. And so the buffalo came to Creator and Creator said, Buffalo, can you give yourself to the two leggeds can you teach them how to dry your meat so they have something to eat through the winter because there's no fruits and vegetables that grow in the winter can you be able to give them your buffalo robe your really warm coat so that they can keep warm in the winter and can you show them how to scrape your hide to stretch it to make their teepees to keep them warm in the winter and the buffalo said yes of course creator and so the buffalo went down to earth to talk to us, the two leggeds, and the buffalo showed us how to use its entire body, its entire being, and never to let anything go to waste. And so this worked for quite a while. We were able to survive several winters until one winter, it was so cold. It was the coldest winter that any of the animals had even experienced, and even the buffalo felt chilled to the bone. And so again, us, the two leggeds who were naked, because we didn't have any fur like many of the other animals that stay warm in the winter. We don't go underground like some of the animals that stay warm in the winter. And we don't hibernate like there. We're freezing. And so again, Wasaka Jack went to Creator and said, Creator, Creator, the two leggeds are freezing again. We have to do something. We have to be able to save them. And Creator said, Well, I don't think there's anything we can do. And Wasaka Jack thought for a moment and he thought of what was hot. What was warm? Fire was warm. Who takes care of fire? <gasps> the Thunderbird takes care of fire. She has beautiful fire eggs. Creator, couldn't we give the fire egg, one of the fire eggs to the two leggeds, just one? That would keep them warm and it would teach them how to use fire. And Creator shook his head and said, I don't know what Zaga Jack. The fire is quite dangerous and it could cause a lot of problems. It can hurt animals and it can also hurt trees. And he said, no, no, Wasaka Jack, I don't think we should give fire to the two leggeds. And Wasaka Jack made a plan. He was going to go ask the Thunderbird anyway. So he made his way up to the tallest mountain where the Thunderbird lived. And he asked her, Thunderbird, Thunderbird, can you spare one of your fire eggs to be able to give to the two leggeds? Because they are freezing and they need to be able to stay warm and survive through the winter. And the Thunderbird put her hands on her hips and she said, Wasaka Jack, you already asked Creator, and Creator already said no. It's kind of like when you ask two parents the same question and they both say no. She said, no, you may not give fire to the two-leggeds. It is a dangerous thing. And so Wasaka Jack said, 
fine. And then he marched out of her cave, but he was making a plan. He was making a plan to steal one of her beautiful fire eggs to be able to give to the two Liggins. And so he waited and waited until finally it was dark and the Thunderbird fell asleep. You could always tell the Thunderbird was asleep because of the loud snoring that rumbled her entire cave. And so through the loud snoring, Wasakajak tiptoed into the Thunderbird's cave. He reached very gently under the Thunderbird into her nest and he pulled out a fire egg and he started tiptoeing more closer to the door and he started getting a little overconfident so he started strutting and he wasn't paying attention to where he was walking and he tripped on a root and he watched as the fire egg started to roll out the mouth of the cave and then it started to roll down the mountain and as it did it started to catch things on fire because it was a fire egg after all and as it continued to roll all of the animals started waking up and started freaking out fire 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 thunderbird there's fire and of course all of the animals making so much noise woke up the thunderbird Thunderbird woke and she looked at the edge of the cave where she saw a path of fire leading out then down the mountain and she saw Wasakajak standing there with big eyes and dark black hair and she said, Wasakajak, why did you steal my egg? And he was like, wow. So he started to run away from her, but he knew he had to catch the egg as well. So he started running down the mountain after the egg. And as he was running, he finally caught up to the egg and he saw the Thunderbird coming. He said, I have to protect the egg somehow. So he swallowed it. <laughs> he gave him the worst heartburn ever, but he was determined and he saw the Thunderbird coming to catch him. But the Thunderbird opened her wings and she made it snow and put out most of the fire, any of the fire that she could reach. But there was still fire creeping down the mountain towards the two legged -like village. But Sakajak was running away, running away from the Thunderbird and she was dipping and diving and trying to get him. And then he's like, oh no, I can't hide from her. Why can't I hide from her? And then he realized. <coughs> Wait a second, I have black hair and the ground is white because it's covered in snow. Of course she can see me. I have to change myself into something. Uh, and then he saw Wapoos, the rabbit, who was of course white against the snow. He thought, perfect. And so he turned into Wapoos, the rabbit, and he started jumping away from the Thunderbird. She lost sight of him. And then finally she caught sight of him. It was hard to hide from him because he still had black tips on his ears. And so she started to dip and dive. He started to zig and zag to get away from her and all of the wapoos watched all of the rabbits watched and they're like hey that's a really good way to get away out from predators we should zig and zag and so from that moment on they continue to zig and zag to get away from predators which works quite well unless you're in front of a minivan going down a back alley then it doesn't work very well and then they continue he continued to run and zip and zag and zip and zag and then he saw a whole clearing of aspens and he jumped forward and he said aspens aspens can you hide me and they were terrified of the Thunderbird. And they began to shake and they said, no, Wasakajak, we will not hide you, we will not protect you. And they began to tremble the closer the Thunderbird came. And still to this day, anytime any wind hits an aspen, they begin to shake thinking it's the Thunderbird coming for them. And so Wasakajak said, well, you're no help. And so they continued to jump. He continued to jump back and forth and back and forth. And then he saw a clearing of all white trees and he thought, those trees are beautifully white and the snow is white and I am white. That's the best place to hide. And so we started zigging, zagging, zigging, zagging, zigging, zagging back and forth. And he said, birch trees, birch trees, you have to protect me. And they said, of course, Wasakajak. And so he jumped into the clearing and he hid behind the birch tree, poking his head out just enough to see the Thunderbird turn and come towards him. She was zigging and flying and soaring. And she said, Wasakajak, come out, come out. And he said, no, no, the birch trees will protect me. And she was angry. So she started clawing and ripping into the bark of the birch trees. She had lightning claws. So she created these deep, dark, burns into the birch trees. And then finally Wasakajak said, stop, 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 Thunderbird. I am so, so sorry. And he came out and he spit out your fire egg. And he said, I'm sorry, Thunderbird, for stealing your, th your egg, but turn around. And she said, why? He said, just turn around. 
and so as she turned around, she saw the fire coming closer to the two-legged's village, and she watched as the two-legged's, the people, gathered around the fire to warm themselves. She watched as they started to cook meat over the fire and to be able to sustain themselves, but she watched something very special happen. They began to speak. They began to tell stories around the fire. They told the story of Wapoose and how he zigzags back and forth. They told the story of the trembling aspen. They told the story of how the birch got those beautiful burns in its bark. They told the story of Wasakajak and all of the trickster ways, but they also shared the story of the glorious Thunderbird and all she had provided. Her heart softened and she decided, yes, you know what, Wasakajak? You can give the fire egg to the two leggings, but you have to teach them how to respect and how to honor fire in a good way, to be able to protect themselves and protect everyone else from fire. Because fire can bring stories together. Fire can feed us, fire can warm us, but it also can be very dangerous. So with Sakajak, you have to teach him all of the ways and all of the teachings and all of the ceremony around fire. So the two leggeds respect fire in a good way. And with Sakajak agreed and brought the fire egg to us, the two legged. And from that point on, we thanked the Thunderbird for that guidance and illuminating our path ahead. But we also thanked a sack jack or sometimes getting into a little bit of trouble for the right reasons. And so that is the Thunderbird song story. And now I'm going to share with you the Thunderbird song. Uh, how is it going? Um, get you my peso. Okay. So um, we're going to do it as a call and response. And so I'm going to break down the words for you. So the first, first word is gitchi. Gitchi. Ma. Ma. Pe. Pe. So. So. Gitchi ma. Peso. Gitchi ma peso. Next is mani tu. Mani tu. Gitchi wai no. Gitchi wai no. Awesome. Gitchi ma peso. Gitchi ma peso. Mani tu. Gitchi wai no. Mani tu. Gitchi wai no. We a he a he a yo. 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 We hi we hi we yo. We hi we hi we yo. Awesome. And we sing that through four times, down to the four directions of the medicine wheel, which is here and here. And the colors of the medicine wheel are also on my skirt. I'm very thankful to be able to wear my ribbon skirt because it tells the story of who I am. Ribbon shirt tells the story of who he is. <coughs> and so please join us in singing. And the beat is nice and simple. You can definitely clap along with us. <coughs>
I know um, it says on the program that I should share the chickadee song as well in the story, but the chickadee is amazing. It just teaches us how to listen so that we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen twice as much as we speak. And if you ever hear a chickadee, you'll hear one say chickadee dee 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 dee. And then you'll hear a little pause before the other says cheeseburger <laughs> because they talk to each other and they teach us in our own lives. We have to listen because if we're talking, we expect people to listen as well. And so this is why it's important to honor the teachings of the Thunderbird and honor the teachings of the Chickadee. Awesome. Miigwech everyone. Sorry I didn't have more time to share, but hopefully next time. Hi hi. <laughs>